Good day. Welcome to another session of Hulk Tutorials. Today we're going to continue our lesson on correction of errors and the suspense account. I want us to look at a question involving the suspense account, the general general, and then also we are going to do a corrected net profit statement. So we are going to look at a question straight away and then we will learn how to do the practical of what we have learned in theory. So that is the question we are going to look at. The trial balance of Acrofi Limited for the year ended 31st December 2009 failed to agree and the trial balance of $810 was debited to assessments account. Accounts were prepared on the basis of the trial balance and showed a net profit of $20,000. The following errors were subsequently discovered. I. The sales day book had been overcast by $90. I. I. Discounts allowed of $612 currently entered in the sales ledger had been posted to the wrong side of the discount allowed account in the nominal ledger. I. 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 Check received from Doris, a customer amounting to $182, was entered correctly in the cash book, but had been credited to the personal account as $128. Ivan, a credit balance of $270 on the personal account of Celestina in the bot ledger had been omitted from the trial balance. Vin, a credit note of $126 for goods returned by Ben, a customer, had been entered twice in the return invoice book and credited twice to the personal account of the customer. Vin I. A payment of $390 on 30th December 2019 for repairs of motor vehicles had been debited to the motor vehicles account. And the last one, VII. Part of the company's premises had been let from 1st December 2019 at a monthly rent of $60. On 1st December, the tenant paid three months rent in advance. This amount had been entered in the cash book, but no other entry had been made in any other account. You are required to prepare a General entries to correct the above errors. B. Show the suspense account. And then C. Calculate the amount of net profits after correcting the errors. And so that is the question for you. We will go back and then look again at the question and look at the errors one by one. But then I want us to start from the requirements. Now, anytime you get a question like this, the first place to check usually is your requirements. And looking at the requirements, we are required to do three things. The first one is that we are supposed to show the journals, which we are going to use to do the correction of errors. And then we are going to show the suspense accounts, which will be duly closed. And then finally, we are going to prepare a statement of a corrected net profit, so that the errors that have affected profit will be corrected and then we'll get a, a right net profit for the year. And so that is basically what we are going to do. Now, I'm going to prepare the general entry and the suspense account together. And then when we finish, we'll look at the third part, which is the statement of adjusted net profit. And so, first of all, we are going to draft the format for the general. So, for Acrofi Limited, General, general. We have a debit and a credit. I put my dollar sign here and I put my particulars here. So this is the general general. And then I'm going to show the suspense account.
So this is what we do. We when you go to the exam hall and get a question like this, it's always advisable to first of all open uh, a page and then write your journal, and then you also open another page for the suspense account, so that you will be doing that simultaneously. I think that will help you than trying to do each of them individually. Okay, so having uh, open the suspense account and then the general journal, we go straight into our question and then we start again and then we read thoughtfully and try and understand and then push them accordingly. So we go back to the question. The trial balance of Acrofi Limited for the year ended 31st December 2019 failed to agree and the difference of $810 was debited to a suspense account. And so what we are saying is that it was debited to a suspense account, meaning that the credit side was more than the debit side. And so when the debit side is, sh is in shortage, then we debit the suspense account. And so let me put my currency signs of dollars there, and I'll call this difference in the books. So the difference is $810. And so I put that there because the question says was debited to a suspense account. So you do that. And then you continue. The trial balance, he said that accounts were prepared on the basis of the trial balance and showed a net profit of $20,000. And so that is the net profit. And we are going to use that when we are preparing the statement of adjusted net profit. And so let's continue. The following errors were subsequently discovered. So the first one, sales day book has been overcast by 90. Sales day book had been overcast by 90. It means that, now when I say sales day book has been overcast, we always take the total of the sales day book. Because we, we were not told which specific data figure was overstated. It's the total, 90. And that total is supposed to be transferred into the sales account. And so when we say the sales day book has been overcast, it actually means that the sales account has been overcast. Now when we say sales account has been overcast, sales account being overcast, we were not told whether it's the debit side or a credit side. So whenever you get a question that tells you an account has been overcast or undercast, then you have to look at the side where the account has its normal balance. You know, sales has a credit balance. And so when we are told that sales is overstated, it means that it is the credit side of the sales account that has been overstated. And this is an error of overcast, which will affect the agreements of the trial balance. And therefore, it will be corrected by means of the suspense account. And because sales has been overstated, what we are going to do is that we have to correct this error. So if the credit side of sales account has been overstated and we want to correct this error, let me draw a line and then try and do some small workings here. So let us assume that this is a sales account. Pardon me, it's very small, but that is not part of the requirement. I'm just trying to use it to explain the concept of this correction. Now, we are saying that sales has been overcast. It's, it's the credit side of the sales account that has been overstated by 90. And I told you in a previous video that when it has been overstated and you want to correct it, of course, then you have to record it on the opposite side to cancel off the effect. We are not going to rewrite what has been done. We assume that it is there, 90. It has been overstated. And so to correct this 90, we need to debit sales by the 90 so that in effect, there will be an offset and a correction. And once we are debiting by 90, we don't have any corresponding entry to take it. In, in double entry system, we say that every debit entry must have a corresponding credit entry. And so because we are debiting nine sales by 90, we need a corresponding entry. And so we are going to call it suspense. We are calling it suspense for two reasons. One, because this error is an error that affects the agreement of the trial balance. And all errors that affect the agreement of the trial balance will have to go through the suspense account. Two, we are naming this suspense because there is no other account to do the corresponding entry. And so I debit sales and call it suspense. And because every debit entry must have a corresponding credit entry, then I'm going to credit the suspense account, and that will be in the name of sales, $90. And so that is how it's going to be. This working I did down here is not part of the requirement. I just did it so that you understand why I am putting sales on the credit of the suspense account. It is because when I am correcting, I am supposed to debit the sales. 
And so that means that I'm supposed to credit suspense accounts with a 90. And so this is what we do. And so you can still do this as workings in your, your answer booklet somewhere. And then you make sure that it's visible. But then this is the main requirement. Sales will appear on the credit of the suspense account. So that is what we have done. And once we have done this, we said that every correction that we do must go through the general journal. And so we go back to the journal. Now when we go to the journal, we have two accounts, basically. Suspense, uh, credited sales, and then sales accounts as debited suspense. Let me say that so sales received the debit entry and suspense received the credit entry. And so when we go to the general journal, it is the one or the account that received the debit entry which should be debited, uh, which should be written first. And so here, the debit entry is in sales, the credit entry is in suspense. And so when we come to the journal, we are going to write sales first. Because that is where we had the debit entry of the, what, the double entry we just did. And so sales, 90. And then we will say suspense, which will also be 90 on the credit side because that one was credited. And so look at the way I wrote it. When I, I got to the second line, I did not write suspense exactly under sales. What I did was a slide. That is how we record in the general journal. The second entry must be slanted like that. And so we put $90 on the debit for sales and $90 on the credit for the suspense. And then this error is an error of overcast. And so after every correction, you narrate what you have done. Now with the narration, you can decide to narrate it with your English language just to try and make it understandable. But it is more important or profitable to narrate with the names of the errors, if you know the name of the error. In this case, it's an undercast, an uh, overcast, sorry. And so we are going to say that being sales overcast, now corrected. So after correction, you will narrate that it was a sales overcast that has been corrected. And so now we have completed the first error. And so for every error, you need to go through this. You have to correct it with a double entry. And if the first correct thing is that you do the double entry for correction. Now if the double entry will affect suspense, then it goes to the suspense account. If the double entry will not affect suspense, it will not go to the suspense account. Then secondly, you come to the general general and then you do the entries and you narrate, then you are done. That is basically what we are going to do. So let us look at the second error and then see how we go about that as well. Now, second error, II. Discount allowed of $612, currently entered in the sales ledger, had been posted to the wrong side of the discount allowed account in the nominal ledger. Now, let me also add this, that anytime you are doing this kind of question, or you are solving this kind of question, a suspense account, your fundamental of double entry is important. Now, before you attempt to correct any error, try and find out the error, whether you understand the meaning of the error. You see, discount allowed, you should ask yourself first, what should have been the double entry for discount, discount allowed? Sorry. So, there should have been a double entry. And the double entry for discount allowed, the question is that, you see, discount allowed of sales to have currently entered in the sales ledger. Now, <coughs> With the sales ledger, the account in the sales ledger is the debtor's account. And so if they are telling you that it has been correctly entered in the sales ledger, the sales ledger does not contain the sales account. It contains account of debtors. It means that it has been correctly recorded in the debtor's account. That is the meaning. And so in this type of questions, they use the ledger names very often. So you need to be conversant as to which accounts are in which ledgers. Here they are saying the sales ledger, and I'm telling you that the sales ledger harbors account of debtors. And so if it has been correctly entered in the sales ledger, then obviously he says that, but the discount allowed account, it was entered at the wrong side of the discount allowed account in the nominal ledger. The nominal ledger contains accounts basically of incomes and expenses. And so when we went to the discount allowed account, instead of debiting the discount allowed, they rather credit it. And so the double entry for discount allowed is that you debit discount allowed and then you credit the data. But then he says the debtor's own has been done correctly. And so instead of debiting the discount allowed, we credited the discount allowed again. So what we have done is that we have done a double credit. We have credited the debtor's account and we have credited discount allowed also. And so this is an error. But this error 
is an error of partial reversal of entry because we have done one correctly and we have reversed the other. And so understanding of these things require a deep understanding of the double entry system. Other than that, you won't even understand it, let alone to solve the question. And so what we are going to do is that we need to correct the error. He says, this count 612, so it has been correctly entered. So what we are going to do is that we are going to, let's assume that we are opening a small account here for discount allowed. Just to try and understand. So we have discount allowed. Now, the amount is 612. Now, what we should have done is that we should have debited the discount allowed with $612. But instead, we credited. And so to correct this error, you need to come back and debit. But if you come back and debit with 612 exactly, what you have done is that you are just cancelling this off. So what we have to do is that we have to double this amount and then bring it to the debit side. Because we assume that the 612 is already there. So if we write 612 here again, as an attempt to correct it, automatically it's like we are just cancelling it off. So when we do a double of it, then the balance will still review the 612. And so anytime there is a reversal of entry and you are correcting, you double the amount. And so 612 times 2 will be $1,224. And yet again, because this error will affect the agreement of the trial balance, the corresponding entry will be suspended. And when it is suspended, it means when you come to the credit side of suspense accounts, we are going to have discounts allowed. 1224 and that is basically how it's going to be and so we are we, we are we are supposed to record discounts allowed on the credit side of the suspense account at a double figure but i tried to explain to you the reason why we are doing that okay so after doing this then the next thing is that we have to transfer what we have done into the general journal and so we come back to the general journal and when we come back because it was discount allowed that received the debit entry we write this account allowed first because that one was the account that received the debit entry. So 1,224 on the debit. And then we slant it again and we write suspense. 1,224. And then we will narrate. This error is partial reversal of entry. And so we will narrate it as being a partial reversal of entry. Now corrected. Now we are done with correcting the second error. So let's look at the next error. Check received from Doris, a customer, amounting to $182, was entered correctly in the cash book, but had been credited to the personal account as $128. And so the check was entered correctly in the cash book. Now, I would say that you should always look at the double entry of every transaction before you look at the error that is uh, following. We are saying that checks, a check received from Doris. The double entry for this is that we debit the cash book. You should have credited Doris. And then what we did is that we have debited the cash book with 182, which is the correct amount, $182. But instead of crediting Doris account with the same amount, we went on to credit Doris account with 128. And so this is an error of transposition. We have changed the position of the 8 and the 2. And so I always say, or I told you the last time, that errors of transposition will always result either in an overcast or an undercast. And so looking at this transaction, the correct amount should have been $182. And Doris' account was rather credited with $128. And so what is going to happen is that we have to find a difference between $182 and 128 and the difference is 54 dollars if you subtract 128 dollars from 182 dollars we have 54 dollars it tells us that the credit side of doris account has been undercast by 54 dollars and so what we do is that when it is an undercast we add it back we record at the same side but if it's an overcast we record at the opposite side and so in correcting that in the ledger let us assume that this is Doris' account. Okay, we should have credited here, we have understated. And so, the difference of 54 cities should be credited to the Doris' account in the name of suspense because this
This is an error that affects the agreement of the trial balance. And so definitely the corresponding has to go into the suspense account. And because the Doris account has been credited, suspense account will be debited in the name of Doris or the debtor. And then we write $54. And so this is how the correction is going to be. Actually, the examiner is more concerned about how you draft the suspense account. But then these things can be done as working in order to help you understand how you do your posting. And so, straight away, once we are done with correcting, then we move to the journal. When we come to the journal, in the journal, because suspense received the debit entry, we write suspense first. So suspense account comes first with 54, and then we slant it and we say, Doris, who is a debtor? 54 on the credit. And then we narrate it. This is an error of transposition. And so we will see being an error of transposition. Now corrected. Then you underline it nicely, and then we are done with correcting that error. And so you can either say error of transposition, or you can still talk about the fact that it was a credit side of various accounts undercut. The most important thing is that whatever you have written or underlined is very understandable. And then it really defines the error in your narration. Okay, so we move on to the next error. Ivan, a credit balance of $270 on the personal account of Celestina in the bot ledger had been omitted from the trial balance. Okay, so this is personal account balance omission. And we are told that the account is in the bot ledger. The bot ledger is the purchases ledger. And it contains accounts of creditors. So it tells us that Celestina is a creditor. And you should know that creditors have credit balances. And so if the balance of 270 on the creditor's account has been omitted, then of course we are shortening the credit side of the trial balance. And so what we need to do is that this error is a balance omitted. It is someone may choose to call it single entry. But this is not a single entry. Because this one, all the entries have been made already. We have balanced of the account and extracted the trial balance. And then when we were preparing the trial balance, we forgot to pick that balance onto the trial balance. So this is not a single entry. This is called a balance omitted. It's one of the errors that I told you that may affect the trial balance, but we may not have a special name for it. And so what we have to do basically is that we'll just make sure that we are showing that it will go and add up to the credit side of the trial balance. And so we take it just like we treat single entry. We are going to credit the account on which, uh, which balance was omitted. And so here we are going to open the credit first account, which is Celestina account. And then we are supposed to credit it with $270 in the name of suspense. Okay, so basically this is how it's supposed to be done, so that the corresponding entry will appear in the suspense account, 270, the debit side of the suspense account. And so that is how it's going to be treated. Then, once this is done, we come to the journal as usual, and then because suspense made the debit entry, we will write suspense first. 270 on the debit side and we slant it and we say Celestina you can see creditor 270 and then we narrate the error this is balance omitted so you can see being a balance of creditor omitted now corrected so you underline it nicely and then we are done with correcting the fourth error. I believe understanding is being achieved. Let us look at the next error. A credit note of $126 for goods returned by Ben, a customer, had been entered twice in the return invoice book and credited twice to the personal account. All right, so as we can see, this is an error of duplication. We are supposed to, you know, credit notes are for returning was. And the double entry for returning was is that we debit the returning was and then we credit the customer's account. 
Now over here, we are seeing that it has been debited twice to the return invoice account and credited twice to the customer. So we have duplicated the entry. And so this error of duplication will not affect the agreement of the trial balance. And so take note that the correction of this error will not pass through the suspense account because it is not an error that will affect the agreement of the trial balance. And so what we are going to do is that we are going to just reverse one of the entries that we have made by crediting return rewards and then debiting the customer with one of them just to offset the balances that will appear. Mind you that in accounting, when we are cancelling off a trans uh, uh, an entry, we rather record the same on the opposite side just to cancel it off. And so here, it is return rewards account and the customer's account. And so we are going to open an account for returns inwards and an account for the customer because both of them have to be worked on. And so it's not going to go through the suspense account. So here we did a double debit here on the debit of return inwards and a double credit for the customer. So when we are reversing one, we are going to credit the customer. The amount is $126. And so we come here when the return was we credit it in the name of the customer. 126. And then we come to the debit of the customer's account returns. 126. And so we are done with the correction in the ledger. What we have done means that it will not go through the suspense. There was no suspense as a corresponding entry in any of them. So suspense is free because the error does not affect the agreement of the trial balance. Okay, so we come to the journal. Now, for the journal, take note that whether the error affects the agreement of the trial balance or not. As for the journal, it is used to correct all types of errors. And so when we come here, we see that customer received the debit entry. So the customer will come first. And the amount is $126 on the debit. And we slant it and we see returns inwards on the credit 126. And then we narrate. The error is that of duplication. So we see being an error of duplication now corrected. Being an error of duplication now corrected. And so this is how it's going to be. We have corrected the error of duplication. Okay, let's move to the last but one error. VI, a payment of $390 on 30th December 2004 for repairs of motor vehicles had been debited to the motor vehicles account. All right, so you see, we have paid an amount of money for the repairs of motor vehicles. And we know that it should have been debited to the repairs of motor vehicle account because there is an account like that, an expense account. Instead, we have debited it to the motor vehicle account. This is an error of principle because the motor vehicle account is a real account. The repairs of motor vehicle account is a nominal account. Even though it, it has appeared on the debit of the motor vehicle because it should have appeared on the debit of repairs of motor vehicle, it is still an error that should be corrected. Mind you that this error will not affect the agreement of the trial balance. Error of principle will not affect. And so still, we will correct it without taking it through the suspense account, but it will still be in the general. And so what we have to do is simply like a raw Peter to pay for kind of correction. The thing belongs to the re repairs. It has gone to motor vehicle. So what we do is just take it off motor vehicle and give it back to repairs. And so that is basically the transfer that we are going to make. We are going to rob it from that which it doesn't belong to. What, what we have to do basically is to just rob it from there. Where, where it doesn't belong to, to where it belongs. So we open two accounts here, one for repairs of motor vehicle and one for motor vehicles. Okay, so these are two accounts. And then we have made a mistake. We debited motor vehicles instead of repairs. So if you want to transfer it from motor vehicles back to repairs, Okay, it was on the debit. We assume it's there. We don't write it there again. So all we need to do is to just credit motor vehicles account and then come and debit return. So when we are crediting motor vehicle, in, in effect, what we are doing is we are just canceling off what is already there. Then we transfer it to where it actually should belong. 
And so we will credit it in the name of repairs, because it's a transfer. Repairs of motor vehicle, and the amount involved is $390. Then when we come to the debit of repairs, we will say motor vehicle. $390. Okay, so what we have done is we have transferred what belongs to repairs back to itself. Mind you, it is not going through the suspense account because it's not affecting the agreement of the trial balance. So we come still to the general. And when we come, because repairs of motor vehicle receive the debit and we write that first. So we see repairs of motor vehicle. 390. And we slide it and see motor vehicles. 390. And then we narrate. This is an error of principle. So being an error of principle now corrected. Then we underline that. And I'm sure by now you are boosting in your understanding. You are doing well. Okay, so let us look at the last error. And then we are done with this correction of error. So the last one, part of the company's premises had been let as from 1st December 2019 at a monthly rent of 60 at a monthly rent of $60. On 1st December, the tenant paid three months rent in advance. This amount had been entered in the cash book, but no other entry had been made in any other account. This is interesting. Just getting to the end of the year, 31st, no, 3rd, December, 1st December of the year in question, we sublet part of our premises as rent. And so what we have done is that we are going to get rent income from what we have done. And then it's 60 CDs per month. And the tenants paid three months in advance, up to February. And so we have received 60 CDs at times three. That is the effect. And so we are getting 180 CDs. This amount should be debited to the cash book and credited to the rent received account. That is, that is what should have been done, okay? But we are told that it was entered correctly in the cash book, but was, uh, no other entry has been made in any other account, meaning that we failed to record it in the rent received account. And once we have done one entry and we didn't do that, then this is an error of single entry, and it will affect the agreement of a trial balance. And mind you, that when you are doing this type of questions, and you are told that, uh, for example, they could have easily said that this rent received, okay, was not posted to the rent received account. But they wouldn't make any mention of the cash book. And you will be wondering. Now, the moment they don't make mention of anything about the other accounts, we always assume that it has been made correctly. So if they tell you that this amount was not sent to the rent received account, and they didn't say anything about the cash book, then obviously, once they didn't talk about it, I say always assume that it has been done correctly. Then tackle the ones that they are focusing on. But here we are told that the cash book was debited correctly, so we are told. And then no other entry has been made. And so we are going to put it back into the rent received account. And so this is what we are going to do. We are going to open a rent received account. A rent received account. And this one, we didn't credit it at all. So what we have to do is we come and credit it. And the amount involved is $180, which is 60 times 3. And because this is an error that affects the agreement of the trial balance, it will go through suspense. Because it doesn't have any corresponding entry now. We don't take it back to the cash book. No, we don't do that. Because it has already been closed. So this will be taken to suspense. And it will appear on the debit of the suspense account as rent received $180 okay and once we are done correcting this obviously we go back to the journal and then we put it there now let me permit me to continue my journal here because the other side is full so my debit and my credit and my particulars and credit so I put my dollar sign and so because suspense received the debit entry, we are going to write suspense first. 180. And then we slant it and we will say rent received or 
or rent receipt. Yeah, rent received 180. And then we narrate it. This is an error of single entry. So being an error of single entry. Now correct it. Then we underline it nicely. Make sure you don't underline to cross the where we have the amount. It's very important. So we just underline it under the particulars. So we are done, ladies and gentlemen, with the first two requirements. So now what we have to do is just add up the suspense account to make sure that it balances. If your suspense account does not balance or agree, it means that you made a mistake again somewhere. You should go back and rectify that. And so we try to add up the suspense account. And so when we add up the suspense account, we have 1,314 for the debit side and then $1,314 for the credit side. And so our, our suspense account has balanced. And so it tells us that we have done our best and we have corrected these errors. So we are done with the suspense account and we are done with the general entries. And we are left with requirement C, where we are supposed to draft a corrected trial balance, uh, sorry, a corrected net profit statement. And so that is what we are going to do now. And so I just want you to relax as I proceed with that and then you we see how we understand that. So we look at requirement C. Requirement C, we are asked to prepare a statement of adjusted net profit. Now remember that the trial balance that was drafted with errors has been used to prepare a final account and has a, a net profit has already been ascertained. And so looking at the question, we are told that accounts were prepared on the basis of the trial balance and showed a net profit of $20,000 before these errors were detected. And so now that we have detected and corrected the errors, we need to adjust the profit because it is obvious that the profit is not a correct figure. And so we have to go through the errors one by one again. So after doing the first, what we have to do is we start all, all over, go through the errors one by one, look at the effect of each error on the profit and adjust it accordingly. And so let me see, I'll start by saying that I'm preparing a statement of corrected or adjusted net profit. So I'll underline it, bring my dollar sign in double. And so that is what I'm doing now, statement of corrected net profit. And I'll always begin with the net profit reported, which is $20,000. And so now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to look at the, each of the errors that were committed one by one and see whether it had an effect on profit. And if the effect is that it's overstated profit. What I'll do is that I'll take it out, reduce it from profit. But if any of the errors reduced the profit and we have to add it back, then we'll add it back to profit. So basically, it's just two things. We are adding back the errors that uh, understated profit and we are going to subtract the errors that overstated profit. That is the effect we are going to look at. And some errors may not affect profit at all. So let us also consider. So let us go back to the errors and look at them one by one and see which ones will affect profits. So the first one, I. The sales day book has been overcast by 90. Sales day book. If the sales day book is overcast, it means that sales is overstated. And when sales is overstated, sales is revenue on the final account or trading profit and loss account or income statement. So when you are overstating your sales, indirectly you are overstating your profit. And so that amount of $90 which has overstated the profit should be subtracted from profit because it's not supposed to be there. And so this sales overstatement of $90 will be subtracted from the net profit. And so let us note it somewhere. When we, we, are, we will first add up what we are supposed to add and then subtract what we are supposed to subtract. So we have first of all noted that sales overstatement will be subtracted from the net profit because it has increased profit unnecessarily. Then we move to the second one. Discount allowed of $612 correctly entered in the sales ledger had been posted to the wrong side of the discount allowed account in the nominal ledger. Now, discount allowed is an expense. Now, expenses reduce profits. And so if you post discount allowed to the opposite side, what you have done is that you have understated the expense. Now, this is what you should note, that we have not just understated discount allowed by 612 we have understated it by the double figure of it. That is why when we were correcting, we doubled the amount before we stooped to the suspense. 
So we have understated discounts by $1,224, which is double of 612. And when you understate an expense like this, you are increasing your profit because higher expenses means lower profit. And so if expenses are going low, profit is going high. And so profit, this profit of uh, 20,000, okay, means that it has been overstated by 1,224 because we failed to subtract that figure from the profit. And so what we have to do is that we are going to subtract it now from the profit. So just like this, sales overstated, discount allowed, uh, understated will also be subtracted. Remember that I told you from the previous video that sales uh, income over cash will be subtracted and expenses under cash will also be subtracted. And so discount allowed will be subtracted. So let us move at look at the next thing. Check received from Doris, a customer amounting to $182, was entered correctly in the cash book, but had been entered to the personal account as $128. Now, this involves the cash book and then the error mainly involves the customer. Now, the customer's account is a debtor's account. Debtor's balances are recorded on the statement of financial position. Profit is reported on the income statement. So whatever affects the statement of financial position does not affect profit. And so this error has no effect on profit because that account, the balance of it will not be used in the calculation of profit. Let us take note that we don't just adjust anything. We only adjust errors that affect income statement items. The Doris account is a balance sheet or statement of financial position item. And we don't care because it doesn't affect our profit. So when we get to the statement of adjusted net profit, an error like this will be ignored. So let us just ignore it and skip it because it has no effect on profit. Then the next error, Ivan. A credit balance of 270 on the personal account of Celestina in the boss ledger had been omitted from the trial balance. Yet again, this is a creditor's account. And creditor's accounts or balances are found on the statement on financial position. So it tells us that this error also will not affect the profit. So we will skip it to the next error. Vin, a credit note of $126 for goods returned by Ben. For goods returned by Ben, a customer had been entered twice in the return rewards book and credited twice to the personal account. Now, the personal account, which is a customer's account, is a debtor's account, so it belongs to the statement of financial position. So the error there will not affect the profit. However, return rewards is on the statement, income statement, and so any error there will affect profit. So let us look at the side of the return rewards. Return rewards Returning was has been debited twice, meaning that we have overstated it by the double amount. And being overstated, how do we ask ourselves, how do we treat returning was? On the income statement, returning was is subtracted from the sales revenue. And so if you are overstating returning was, it means that you are understating the revenue. And when you are understating revenue, you are understating your profit. And so overstatement of returning was will mean an understatement of the profit. And because we have understated profit and we have now seen it, the correct thing, we have to add back to the profit. And so, returning was of 126 was made double. So, one of them has to be added back to profit. And so, we will add returns inward overcast, which is uh, 126. Let me put that here. 126, so that when I finish, I'll sum them up. And so we are adding back return inwards overcast. That is the effect. Okay. Then we move to the next error. A, a payment of $390 on 30th December 2019 for repairs of motor vehicle has been debited to the motor vehicle's account. Now, what we did was that you no know, repairs of motor vehicle is an expense which should reduce profit. We did not put it there. We took it to the motor vehicle account, which is in the statement of financial position. So what we did was that this returns a repairs of motor vehicle that was not recorded, resulted in understatement of an expense. So this expense should have been subtracted from profit 
it was not because it wasn't recorded so we didn't get the balance and because it was not subtracted from profit profit has been overstated so now that we have seen it we have to now subtract it from profit and so this will be subtracted the effects of the repairs will be subtracted from our profit and so that also will be treated down here after we add what we are supposed to add so take note that we subtract the repairs of motor vehicle that was not recorded from the profit and then finally Part of the company's premises had been let from 1st December 2019 at a monthly rent of $60. On 1st December, the tenant paid three months rent in advance. This amount had been entered in the cash book, but no other entry had been made in any other account. This is very interesting. We know that if you multiply by three, it's 180. Now, this is rent received. It's an income. And because we didn't record it in the rent received account, we have understated income. And when you understate your income, you are understating your profit. So now that we know, we have to go and add it back to profit. However, it is important to know that we are preparing accounts to the year end of 2019. And this rent was paid till February because it was for three months, starting from 1st December 2019 to February 2020. So this means that even though we have received 180, the rent income for the year is supposed to be that which relates to the year, which is 60. Remember the accrual concept, that we only record uh, income that has been earned, not what has been received. And so we have earned the 60. And so for the purpose of profit calculation, we will take only 60, which relates to this year, and then ignore the extra 120. And so yes, it is income undercast, but the amount involved should be 60 when we come to the profit adjustment. And so we are going to add rent income under, uh, sorry, yeah, rent income under uh, undercast because we didn't record it at all. So I fit it as undercast. And the amount involved is 60. And so that is all for what we are going to add. When we add 126 to 60, we are having $186. And so what we are going to do is that we are going to add the $186 to the 20,000, we have 20,186 dollars. And now we less the items that are supposed to be less out of the profit. And so we start with our sales overcast. Remember we spoke about it. So there is a sales overcast of 90. And then also there was a discount allowed. Remember, so discount allowed also is 1224 that is a double effect and then finally we have repairs of motor vehicle that was not even recorded so repairs of motor vehicles which is 390 dollars we have to now add up this and then subtract from what we have here so when you add up this three you have 1704 dollars so i put it in bracket and i subtract from the total and therefore it means that my adjusted net profit will be eighteen thousand four hundred and eighty two which is i call it adjusted net profit and so now we have adjusted the net profit this is the correct net profit reported for 2019 and so ladies and gentlemen this brings us to the end of another lesson and i believe that it has been helpful. If you didn't get anything, you can go back and revisit and then look at it again. Or you can still send me a message or give me a call. We will discuss and then know how to improve your accounting. Remember to subscribe to the channel and then share, like, and then comment and let me know your reactions. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.